<laughs> nothing formal at all whatsoever. Mm. And uh, any moment now, we should appear. Yeah. Here we go. There we are. We're up. We're live. We, we're live. You're, you're live in front of, I can't say thousands of people. That's not That's true. okay. They will, they will actually tell us how many are on. The streams usually start with a, a couple of hundred people might be waiting to start. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then the, the Twitch will send messages to people saying, hey, Dave is live. Do you want to come and watch? Mm. And people will join in. During the first 30 minutes, people join in bit by bit by uh -huh. bit. And we usually max out at around, you guys tell me, max out at around maybe four, five, six hundred. And very, very occasionally, a bunch of people join all of a sudden and it'll go wow. up. And are they all like doing wood, wood block carving? Well, no, or? of course not. This is, it's a gaming channel. So in the yeah. beginning, the people who were watching our streams were the gamers who had just sort of bumped into this. And they were uh -huh. expecting someone to sit there, you know, playing, <laughs> playing a third a first-person shooter game or something like this. <laughs> but bit by bit, tw Twitch did open up to the idea of people doing other things. And there mm. are now channels on Twitch where people just, just chat or, or do knitting or, or you know all kinds mm. of things. It, 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 it's become much wider than it used to be. So they will tell us if we had uh, people asking here, we can ask them what kind of people they are. And sometimes we ask, like, where are you from? And there will be a big brap saying, I'm from Chile, Argentina, or, or France, or Germany, or whatever. Oh. At this time of day, you know, well, you're from Britain, you know exactly what time of day it is right now in Britain. It's, it's, oh, it's okay, early it's, in the it's morning. Late, no, it's, no it's, it's bedtime, whatever. It's oh, bedtime. yes, yes. It must be, tw it's summer, so it's one o'clock or something. Yes, yeah, nine it's hours. One They're telling us, we just have to ask a question, and the, the chat will <laughs> answer. Okay, anyway, but start, start well, I, I don't know who you are. Well, this uh, is the lady is um, Capucine Kornberg. Yeah, good pronunciation. A French lady who is in, living in Britain, mm -hmm. working for the British Museum uh, as a science scientific researcher. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't do this yeah, the wrong way. Yeah, I'm not a curator. I'm, so, okay, so I'm a scientific researcher. Okay, but is always with the print department or you work with other departments in the museum as well? Well, in the past, because I've been at the British Museum for a long time. Mm. 20 years, I can't believe it, but yeah. I don't see that as very long time, but okay. <laughs> but no, no, okay. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, I, I used to do lots of things. I used to, to look after, try to understand how objects deteriorate in the museum, how to prevent them uh, from deteriorating. So preservation protection. Yes, okay. but six years ago, so I Just yeah. really try, she, I, I'm not gonna look at you. I have to keep looking at this, so please yeah. don't. It's a terrible yeah. conversation. It looks like I'm looking yeah. away. I'm not interested in what we're saying because I have to follow what's going on here yes, to catch their question. Yes, questions. I understand. So mostly you should really be talking there yes. rather than me so that ah. I can look away safely. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay. That's yeah, okay. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, yeah, we go. So, <laughs> but, but six years ago, I was asked to look at um, light sensitivity of Japanese prints. And then I got completely hooked. And, and actually, you got me hooked because. Well, the Great Wave Project, you sure? Yes, because I wanted to know how the Great Wave was, was, uh, had been made. Because I, I just looked at, yeah, I was just doing tests to see how light sensitive the, the colorants mm. were. Mm. And then I thought, ah, oh, but this is such a beautiful object. Mm. I want to know more about it. So I. You bumped I, into our YouTube. So I went, <laughs> I went YouTube, yes. and then yeah. Dave Bull, full mm. demonstration mm. how mm. to do it. Mm. And then mm. I, mm. I got hooked. Well, one way of doing it, you know, this is something too. I don't, somehow now the world whenever they google great wave or whatever my name comes up there those videos i made come up there and this is you know wonderful feeling for me but i'm a little bit concerned about what they mean i'm just some guy on the internet in that mm. sense you know and somehow people have the idea out there that i am the expert on the great wave you know even you know that that toy company last year they invited me oh to yes, join that panel yes, yes and i have mixed feelings i feel like i know a lot about the craft here, the carving and printing. Yeah, yes. But as far as that particular print, the Great Wave, I'm no more knowledgeable about that than, than anything else. Mm. So people ask me questions. Dave, why did Hoxai make the wave come from the left? What does this signify? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to handle this, of course. Mm. So, so. so I'm, I'm happy that you got in there and that you saw yes. this, but I hope you understand that all I know of about course. is one thing. It's the point of, course, of the knife but, but and the wood. But this is a bit know? we don't know about mm. in the museum, yes, because yes, the curators, yes. my colleagues oh. at the British Museum, they know all about art history uh, and the significance of certain yeah. things, uh, but, yeah. but they don't know this about the, the it's carving. It's always been this way, hasn't it, for well yeah. over 100 years. Ever since the Japanese stuff started coming to the West, there's been this compartmentalization of the way mm. you look at it. 
those original designers on a Van Gogh and you know the artists they looked at it a certain way and mm. drew something from it you and your curators are looking as you said you know how old are the pigments and what's going on yeah, you know? yeah, and we yeah. all look at it from a different way and there's no place or no environment where these things can be yes can be melded can yeah be so so yeah. you were my missing link no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that but okay. <laughs> no but for the no, project of course yeah, yeah, yeah. of course of course of course, yeah. of course, of course. very um, important so but how do you how do you like we've had communication you've you've taught me some things about these prints of these mm. books and stuff that i didn't know because mm. obviously I, I didn't see these things and i've got my statements out there this is how i think they were carved but you know as we discovered three or four years ago there could be some factor that you and I look at the same object and the same fact and draw different conclusions. Mm, I know, I know. The only way around that is just keep talking, whatever, keep looking yes, and gathering information yes. and keep talking. The specific yes. thing I mentioned for the people who don't know here is that the British Museum has a number of copies of the Great Wave. I don't Not copies. Uh, go. Okay, okay, just pause that. <laughs> Impression. L- language, language <laughs> barrier here. <laughs> we found this a few days ago when Capucine first came here. I would speak what I thought was language that had meaning. And for you, some of the words I used yeah. have a different meaning. Yeah, yeah. And we got to put this one right here. I, I still keep saying, here are we are. There is, I have now one, two, three copies of this print. And I'm using, I know I don't, because yeah, I'm yeah, playing, yeah. I'm using the word in one certain way. And for Capucine, the word copy has a very, well, you tell me the word copy. Well, it, it, it means like an imitation, a, a reproduction, but not something for, for, for prints, not printed from the same wood blocks. So, so for me, this, these are three impressions. Okay, but as a and, and, yeah. okay, and, and if someone else decided to make their own uh, version, version of this, of this that, that would, would be, be a, a copy. But it could be a wood block print copy yeah. and it would have its own impressions. Yeah. But so, I mean, this was a copy, actually, remember? We've got the Hoxha drawings, and I mean, I'm, not, I'm not arguing, mm. I'm just, you know, I, what does this word mean? Well, maybe it's easier with with the Great Wave because there's there's one we well mm-hmm. keep so, keep yeah, digging keep yeah. digging <laughs> yes uh, because we we know that there's uh, in a way some original um, impressions theoretically somewhere up there there is the first yeah. one yes, yes that's been recognized you know I mean no 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 but you know we know they were made theoretically there yes. is a first one up there somewhere. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe it's been destroyed because well, mostly, we don't, most we don't likely, know. we don't know. But we have a set mm-hmm. of... of, of uh, 40, 46, of, yes, yeah. yes. No, we also have uh, a range of impressions of the Great Wave mm-hmm. that we know were printed from the original woodblocks. And for me, these are all originals. By whose decision, though? I mean, you said we know they were printed from the blocks. Who says so? So I'm not being hostile mm. to you at all. I'm no, just no, asking no. How, do you, how do you make these decisions? Because they have lots of commonalities, you mm. know, uh, between each other, mm. and, and some come from more reputable um, provenance. Mm. We know they've been in that museum since 1874, so it's not yeah, a rich copy. Yes, yes. Sort of thing, so, so that's. Yeah. So you think yeah. what you're, you're thinking. Yeah. And my sort of opposition to this is knowing how extremely well made some reproductions were done mm. copying i can't say microscopically that's not true but copying visually as much mm. as possible shaping these lines there were any number of reproductions slash forgeries made in the meiji era Mm. And my hypothesis is that quite possibly, probably, some of those are in museum collections around the world. And mm. sort of, we all know this. We know that I mean, museums have things in them. I, I, I agree with this, but we just don't agree, mm. uh, you and I, mm. about which ones mm. are, are, mm. are, are can really copies. Uh, can yeah, really yeah but, but for sure there are some. I, I mean, they, they, they put in, like mm. some museum puts uh, like original, mm. but I look at them. And, and you would look at them and you would know straight yes. away so, that, that they are not. That particular curator is convinced that he has an original. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm sorry, I'm not trying to, it sounds like I'm trying to be hostile towards you. No, I'm, all I'm no, I know, I know you know. These things are, I would myself really want to avoid saying, here we are, this really is, you know, from the early mm. days. I think all of us just don't have the information to be able to make that statement. Mm. Okay, back, but back to our use of this yep. word copy, then, you have a number of 
impressions of the great yeah. wave. Yeah, we have three. Bingo, bingo. And David is just using the word in a common sense uh, language. Yeah, word, yeah, I sense. understand. I'm sorry, I'll probably do it again in a few minutes because that, I can't fine. change 71 years of training. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I will try and remember that. Impressions. I asked you today when you came, I asked you to, to bring, uh, where do we start, the thread here, you know. Kapusin and I, we had this, these threads going back and forth about the Great Wave three, four, five years ago. I really don't want to sort of go down that line mm. right now because one, there's no sort of point to, to banging away on the same things. And I also, I didn't prepare, you didn't prepare the sort of little documentation. No, I, 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 Look I, at this, see, this is my point. So I didn't yeah, prepare. No, I didn't so prepare we're anything. Gonna, we're not going to go that way. It's an open thing. We can talk about it later at some other time. Mm. The lady is here specifically this time around with a video crew from the British Museum to, show, mm -hmm. to make a video for the British Museum's YouTube channel. Exactly. Now you saw on our Instagram last week that we put some photographs up from this. The video, the video taping part is done. That crew, they've gone back to it, right? Yes, they've yes. gone back. Yeah, 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 yeah. They will be asking, Yesterday. absolutely, they will be asking, when is this thing, do you... I don't know. Okay. But are we talking about next week or, or six months from now? Or? Well, I, I would say probably like later, two, later, two later. three months. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it takes time. There are okay. lots of projects in the pipeline. Okay. So, no yeah. yeah. Those people don't just work on the, the print projects with you guys. They have lots of work. Yes, we've got lots of okay. other stuff. Then obviously, I'm just let me know when you of know course, about it. Of course, I will. We will pass on when that thing is going to be coming available. Because network. they will also send you a version to see if you're happy with oh, it. To check, you mean? Yeah, but yeah, to see if you have any yeah, yeah. things that... I don't, I, know, I don't have any desire that let, let me look at this first before you publish it. I have no such feeling. Well, that's, I think that's what they do with everybody. <laughs> uh, from, yeah. Did you hear from them? Did they recover the last data? Do you know about this? Have you had yes, contact Yes, they them? told me it looks good, so... <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I don't want to get into the whole full story here too much, but we had, we had two days of filming. We filmed on a Wednesday here all day long. We had a really good interview. Yeah. We, she and I explained our points and blah, blah, blah. I, blah, I, blah. I, and you proposed to me twice. <laughs> Is that public information? <laughs> <laughs> With your husband waiting outside. <laughs> well, anyway. so, so we had a long day of filming here and then another half day of filming over at Askasan's place. And that, yep. that was really fun. We, we've, was got to, we've got to talk about this. I think they're waiting for us to, to chat about this one too. So, so. But then the next morning, they weren't supposed to be here. Friday morning, they come to the front door here and the lady, Sean, uh, Sean. Sean the, the cameraman lady looked at me and I, I, I probably said, you've lost the data, right? I mean, she, she said so. <laughs> so there's a hard drive problem or something. They weren't sure if they could recover the data. So we, we basically did as much as yeah. we could all over again. Yeah, you know, so uh, yeah it was intense. And it's the second system effect. You can never do it again a second time with the relaxation and the easygoing and the naturalness that you could do the mm. first time. <laughs> so whatever. Anyway. Yeah, things are as they are, you know. I am not immune to uh, lots of screw ups with cameras, and uh, mm. as these guys know, <laughs> you know we're, we're probably doing this now. And I can look over the chat yeah, and says, yeah, Dave, yeah. don't forget to plug in the microphone. We've been talking for the past 20 minutes. So, as if we're okay, okay. Right? but <laughs> <laughs> we have been there, done that. You know, so that's why I should be making sure I do check this, uh, mm. check this, yeah, this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, because I when understand. things start to go wrong, they let me know. But mm -hmm. if I don't look at this, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah, we trouble. could just go on and on and. I actually, what I thought was, I have work to do here today. Yes, well, show no, me. No, I'd no, like no, to what see I mean you in I action. I, no, I can't do the microscope thing here and all that fine ah. carving and blah 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 because stuff just just gets in the way. We are at the moment, or I am at the moment. There's carving some of the. Uh, it's a surgical project, you know, the, the print here. Oh. It's Oka, Okara Yoshi. What do, you, do you know anything about no. that? Okara? No. See, boy, I have a job to do. Okara Yoshi's name, he's known by some people overseas. He's known by people that have watched all my videos. Did you, you've never seen the video when I talk about my beginnings, how I got to Japan and what I was doing this. I mentioned it. Uh, well, I know you the your Surimuno project. No, long, long, long before that. When okay. I first, before I came to Japan, we visited yeah. and I saw woodblock prints and thought I could maybe like to yeah. do this. It was Okada Yoshio's prints that I had seen. So, oh, what, you I probably haven't it seen like that. Oh, uh, it was like Edo prints. There's a lot of things mixed in. Seeing a bunch of his prints one day in a department store yeah. made a huge impact on me. I bought them and took them home and studied them and studied them and studied uh -huh. them. And it was the single biggest influence on me to say I really would wow. like to do this. And it was... It was his, not, not that One design, but the same designer, Okada Yoshio. He's my father's generation, so a generation above me. 
He oh. passed away last year. Mm -hmm. And he's mostly famous, known in Japan as a, an illustrator. He did book illustrations, mm -hmm. magazine illustrations, newspaper mm -hmm. illustrations, kabuki posters, stuff like that. So there's this thing, there's artists and there's illustrators. Yes, you know, there's yes, this yes, two yeah. worlds. And even in here in Japan, you're the same well, thing. Yeah, yeah. So he was a, a noted illustrator. I met him and knew him. Uh, we had the, the idea on the table that at one point we would work together. Dave would make prints mm. based on one of his designs. I was busy, he was busy, it just got postponed down the years, and last year I saw the newspaper that mm. he was gone. Mm. So, anyway, we don't want to talk too much about mm. that today. But so, anyway, so did, we, did he well, live in Tokyo? Uh, he lived in Kobe, but uh, okay, uh, yeah, Kobe yeah, and, yeah. and Tokyo. Anyway, <coughs> long story short, we chased up his family, they're on board with it. I now have a contract allowing me open use of his work for the manufacture of woodblock prints. Wow. And there's lots of plans. We're planning a subscription series. We're planning all kinds of stuff for this because they're kind of polarizing. There's people that really don't like them at all, and there's people that, oh my God, I have got to have that object. Mm. So we're starting with actually this is a reproduction of a print of his that was published in the 1970s by a different publisher, mm -hmm. and we're just starting with this because it's sort of low-hanging fruit. We've got the image. We've got the design. We can make a print of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm without going back to his files. And this is one of the first... Uh... And this is the proof. These are the first two proofs. I, I don't even know if I've showed them on the stream because these are not ready for prime time yet. But this is... Uh, this wow. is the first proof. So, so it's not ready. Uh, this thing should be going I've got to recarve some of the blue. We'll be talking about it next week when I do start the carving work. So. But I see an influence here. Influence on? Of, of the wave? Well, that's why I chose this one. It's funny, the, the, the story does get paid. We needed to choose, you know, his nephew was saying, well, let's go, what are we, we going to start? What are we going to start? And rather than start digging in the files and looking up tracings and all that kind of stuff, mm. we just decided I picked his wave to, mm. to start. You know? uh, it's not an image that everybody in the world finds interesting, but it is going to be uh, it's very It's stunning. It's, if you think so. Yes, I do think so. My general uh, experience with this is that in general, Western males are attracted to his stuff. <laughs> Japanese females are not at all. And this is, I'm generalizing, but more, almost I get mm. no, no experience. Western males love it. Western females, ambivalent. Japanese females can't stand it. Mm. In, in general. In general so. What about you? As I said, I know, when I first saw it in the department store, I am a Western male. I must have had that so, influence. So you, but Dave is a printmaker. I just, oh my God, <laughs> look at the way those colors are printed into this thing, you know. So, so for yeah. me, there's there's very much a mixed, yeah. know, mixed yeah. thing yeah. happening here, you know. So. So which was, uh, did you, the first designs you 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 saw. You, you saw... Okay, uh, these guys all know them, because yeah, we've yeah, seen yeah. us and talked about this on yeah, the stream yeah, yeah, lots yeah. and lots Well, you'll have to show me later. So, so if you, when, when the stream wraps up, if you remind me about this, I've got the prints upstairs. I'd love to see them. I absolutely love to see them. They should be in your museum. I can <laughs> so, talk to so, my curators. So, so. <laughs> but this <laughs> is going to be in our museum. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. It, that all not quite the same way as the Rosetta Stone is in there for the same reason, but yes, it's okay, I'll take what I can get where I can get it. You know, I have such huge respect for your institution, you know, I know, as a child in England I knew nothing about it, but when I went back there as an adult, I lived there for one year when I was 22, 21 going into 22. I had dropped out of university, went back to London to, to mm. make it as a flute player. And I sort of semi-made it as a flute player, but realized that I wasn't going to make it as a flute player, so I ended up going back to Canada. But the year I spent there, I did busking, I worked with an orchestra for a while, I did this and that. In London? Yes, in London. This is 1972. I actually got ah. a gig. I got a gig playing a Mozart flute concerto with a call, with an orchestra there, the Imperial wow. College Orchestra. No, it, was my, it was my London, I've had a London debut at the show. It's yeah, fantastic. I have this vision of you busking with uh, I playing did. the flute. Outside wow. the Royal Festival Hall, I had a spot. I can I can show you on Google Play, a Google Google show us where it was, and on rainy days and it got really cold. You know, you I would make enough busking for a couple of weeks, so I've got like two weeks free time. I couldn't practice flute in my digs because the guy mm -hmm. got really upset about the noise, so I didn't really practice. It was just that glorious city and me, and mm. I was so shy, so shy. I didn't know how to use the buses. Oh. I knew how to use the bus. You, you, the bus comes to the bus stop, you jump on, and the conductor says mm. where you want to go, you tell them where you want to mm. go, and you pay the money, gives you change. I was too shy, I couldn't talk to people. 
Wow. So because the buses were manned, I couldn't yeah. use them. Oh, gosh. So I walked around this city, walked and walked and walked and walked, and I have now V&A down in Brompton and your mm. institution up on Russell. They were two of my target places to go, day wow. after day after day. And now you're here. I mean, not here, here, but YouTube talking to hundred thousands of people or being watched by whatever, whatever, whatever. So <laughs> your institution, I, it's a little tiny regret to me now that I had no knowledge of Japan or interest in Japan or anything about Japanese prints. So I didn't have any, I didn't see any of the Japanese part, the well, Japanese prints of Richard Museum. This, this can be... Uh, well, they were probably not on display at that time, I think. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. 1972. Uh, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I went back there in two, 1999. As I was making, getting ready to make my pseudonym albums, I wrote to the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, the Chicago Art Institute, mm. the V&A, and the BM. Chicago didn't write back. Mm. Boston Museum said, sorry, we're busy, no room for visitors. And the V&A and BM just said, come on in. Mm. This was astonishing. Mm. I don't remember the name of the person at the time who answered to me. This is 1999. Well, I had outlined, I'm going to make these things, I'm going to call Suryo no albums. I'd like to look at some original Japanese prints. You guys have some, is it possible? Mm. Look it could be Tim Clark. He, no, he was there. It wasn't no, Tim. it was no, someone no, else. No, it was a, you know, an office person, whatever. Okay, you know. okay. So me and uh, Sadako, my lady, went there. We went down that hallway behind that screen into the... Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah I've Japanese been there, yeah, yeah. And I couldn't believe it. A few introductions. They were busy. They pulled out some trays of prints. There's a long table. I sat there at one end of the table looking through prints. They just ignored me. I had my bag by my side and they just trusted me and left me alone to, to look through these prints, pick them up one by one and pick them up. And this mm. is the British Museum and Dave is just like... I'm, I'm not sure it would be exactly like this. Uh, these days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because me, even like if I handle prints, some prints, I mean, no, I mean, very precious prints. I would probably wear gloves, um, and and sometimes they ask me to to wear a mask to do it the Japanese way because we we try to uh, definitely to look at paintings. Mm -hmm. We wear a mask or, or we take a, a handkerchief. Okay. And, uh, this is to protect the objects. Yes, and and also I don't know they, because this is the thing done in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They want to follow. Okay, can I start? You said wear gloves. I know sometimes I've. You know, I show my own stuff on the street, whatever like this. I will get an old book, we'll get it from mm. upstairs, and I will hold it. And there will be people on the street that say, oh my God, he should be wearing gloves to touch this. And I myself actually don't think so. And it turns out that there's a thing. Other people who, somebody here might be a curator and say, no, no, curators these days never wear gloves to touch things. And it New York depends. Times wrote about this. Did you see last week? There was a story in the New York Times about this. No, I didn't thing. see that. Yes. I think, forget the headline of the Times, it said, for curators in most museums, it's the gloves come off. Or I forget the title of this. Mm. So, so it depends. When Definitely, I'm more used about conservators, you know, people who, who, who um, repair uh, some damages. Mm. And, and sometimes they feel that to better understand, you know, the structure of an object, they need to touch it. Mm. They definitely to mm. touch it. But there are some objects like metals. We will not touch it with our uh, oxidization. Yeah, issues yeah, or something. because okay, of the okay. oil on mm. our fingers. So I think this was sort of books and prints and papers and stuff like that was the the impression I had of this discussion. Well, I think books. There's also something that y you can better handle uh, books with, with without gloves. Yeah, I think so myself. Yeah, so this yeah, is yeah. Why I, I so so it, it it depends. Mm. If mm. you have something very friable and. And, and, and you only need to do a little, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. I guess also too, the person, my hands as it turns out, I guess, are not specifically oily. I guess there is of course skin oil and if, if I touch something, the police department can come and use some powder and they can get my mm. fingerprint from it. So I have left a trace there, but I don't have any feeling that I am leaving grotesque yeah. yeah. amounts of oil on this paper. You know? And for us, it comes back to one thing. These wood pot prints, you have seen our printers at work. We touch these things. And we course. touch them again and we touch them again and we touch them again and of we touch course. them again. I mean, of course. It's been handled. And, and me, when the, the great wave, I've touched the back. I mean, I, I'm mm. not touching mm. the, the mm. front. Mm. Uh, and, and, and often they're, they're like mounted, so, so we don't need to, mm. when we mm. handle yeah, them, course, we don't need to. Yeah, of course, you're picking up a substance. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. so yeah. Um, I was just, yeah. just curious to hear you mention that you put your gloves on, whereas there's this, you know. Yeah. There's this but, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's a bit of, of freedom. I mean, definitely yeah. with... Case by case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
What's the most sort of uh, exciting, exotic object in there that you've actually had access to? You know, I mean, I mean the Great Wave might be it. Yeah, I, I guess. mean, for I me, know. I mean, seeing the Great Wave, I mean, <laughs> I was. Yeah. I was so nervous before it came to my lab. Mm -hmm. I had my, my actually my knees shaking. I was like, oh my really? gosh. It's yeah. a friend. It's a piece of paper. I know, but I was like, I was worried. I, I was worried that it, I could I could it damage is, it, it, you is, know? It I was like, oh my gosh. Because I, I get that too. I offer these packages and sometimes it's an old print or book, whatever, and I'm thumbing it, thumbing it, thumbing it. And there would be a comment that says, look, please, you know, it's all, you can, you've just told us how this book is damaged from the pages being turned too often and here you are turning the pages you're just adding to the thing you know and i'm like the men the people whatever it was made whatever the people who made this book made it for a reason for other human mm. beings to sit there on a table and open it up and look mm. at it and read it they didn't make it to be nitrogen sealed in a vacuum chamber and never touched by the hand of man yeah, again yeah, you know yeah. And that book is going to get a bit more worn, mm -hmm. but also I'm showing 500 people this, and the knowledge is spreading around. I mean, what's the what's the cost benefit analysis here? You know. Yes, we have the same. Do we put mm -hmm. objects on display, like you know, objects that are very uh, famous mm -hmm. uh, but are light sensitive? Do we put them on mm -hmm. display because mm -hmm. there's a demand mm -hmm. to see them? Mm -hmm. But we know we're a going need to see yeah, them. Yeah. But because but we know that the light is going to but, to affect them. But, it's it's yeah risk management so in the case of you that that great wave then do you have a, a chart somewhere that shows how often this thing has been displayed and somebody just assigned to say we're allowed to have an x10 lumen hours per year or something like this is this uh, we have yeah we have records uh we don't have charts but mm -hmm. we have records it's been on display between mm -hmm. this and this mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and that would be a factor when somebody else wants to borrow it for an exhibition you have to say i'm sorry no mm -hmm. this has been displayed too much recently come back five years from now is that yes, so or, or, or we have uh, embargo periods when we know we've been it's been mm. uh, on display mm. for mm. for so mm. long, mm. and we say now it's to be in the dark mm. for. But it doesn't recover, you know. I mean, no, that's no, not no. How this thing is it, 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 yeah. it's, it's just to it's to just make to minimize, sure that yes. so that is going to be available instead of lasting to the year three thousand, it might last to the year three thousand two hundred. Exactly. <laughs> okay, but at the end of the day, that mulberry fiber actually, those great waves you've gotten out, we're talking. Mm. 200 years almost yeah I mean the fiber itself the paper itself is really now getting soft and brittle you know I mean, we're not just talking about pigments mm. you know, we're talking about the object itself is at some point dust to dust you know it's, it's mm. not the but yeah but what if, as long as you can do it yeah then what can yeah, you do what can yeah you do? yeah mm. yeah but we are mostly worried about the colors yeah, yeah. also I have to say unfortunately that I've, I've tested you know the um, the light sensitivity of the great wave. That's how mm -hmm. I started, mm -hmm. and everything that could fade it has already faded. It's gone. Yeah, yeah it's gone. Yeah. So yeah. in theory, we what could you mean? You see, I mean, they are. You mean the quick fading ones are yeah. already, we're already yeah. end of life. Yeah, the half yeah. life is long disappeared. Yeah. yeah. So we don't know what the thing looked like. No, we don't. No. Yeah. And that's something I'm really well, interested in. Great way, though. Remember, that's it's not really a multicolored object. It has different levels of blue and the sky, but and compared the boats, to but you're okay, but I mean, it's not. There's not reds, blues, greens all over the place. No, it's not a no, no, no. And that's why we, we thing, think it so. was at the beginning of the 36 views of Mount Fuji mm. when it was released, mm. because I mean, as you know, mm. like the first prints, first design, five mm. design mm. where where I yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That whole question of an institution like yours, I know, compared Britain and Japan. I mentioned that the V&A and the British Museum let me in quickly and, and op were open to me. The Japanese institutions are exactly the other way around. Mm. And I think even you, you mentioned last week that you found this, even though you're a researcher from the British Museum, it really hasn't even sometimes been easy for you to get access to Japanese I, I, I need to be introduced by other people. Yeah, yeah, the culture yeah. is so yeah. good. Even a researcher from the British Museum, a known, you know, a known lady, you're there, you're not faking this. This is actually who you are and this mm. is your job and they know you because they've seen your research papers. Yeah. They still want an introduction from somebody. You know, give me a break. Like, you know, I told you I saw a gentleman yesterday. And I a collector. Uh, yeah, uh, we uh, spent three hours. Mm -hmm. But I wrote to him five years ago, and I never got a reply. Even though you are who yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, when, but I got introduced mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. like two months ago mm -hmm. by one of mm -hmm. my colleagues mm -hmm. who the, knows me. The chain me. goes down. The yeah, chain goes down but if it's just me writing to him oh. directly, I get no... 
Interesting. But Pilate could be, remember, he's a noted person, so he may get so requests may all the time, and like some dude walks off the street, can I see your prints? He doesn't want to waste yeah, time with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're a researcher from the British Museum. Like, w what level are you going to cut this off, you know? I don't know. For me, this thing, I'm in Japan. The number of times I've been in the back room in the museum in Japan in the 40 years I've been here now is once. Wow. Once. Chiba Asano-san let me in once to look at some prints to see about the Once. That's it. Yeah. Because I have no introduction. I have no university degree, which is a real criteria. Yeah. All right. So, 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 so. Okay. But then in general, I said the British Museum allowed me in. There's this, the two things. Now, your institutions have to preserve and protect. That's mm -hmm. one of your mandates. Keep this stuff safely in here yeah. so that it yeah. will yeah. not Full. get destroyed. Yep. Fair enough. You've also got the mandate to, what do you tell me, educate and, and show and study yeah, and research. And study. And yeah, 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 the two things. Conduct research. But those two things are they're perhaps not compatible. To do research, you've got to look at this thing, open it, touch it, maybe take samples. Yes. To preserve and protect it, it's lock it up, don't touch it. So the two things are sort of incompatible. Yeah, so, so, but so we have. You find the balance. Yeah, so yeah, we what I was about trying to say was, to me, the, the Western institutions, the ones that I've had contact with, have found a reasonable balance. They let me in, they let me see this, and you're doing this research, but they are still protecting, preserving. The Japanese institutions, clearly they are prioritizing protection. Yes. Lock it up. Yeah, and, Lock it up. And even for scientists. Bingo. Because Lock they, they will not allow so, so. certain yeah. scientific techniques. Mm -hmm. like, oh, that, that might be destructive, you mean? or? Well, we, we know they're safe. Uh, but it's, it's true <laughs> that there is a potential if you don't use the equipment X properly. X molecules are going to be removed? or it like It's like uh, mm. with some instrument, you use uh, a laser light mm. to, to uh, do some analysis. Mm, mm. So you can fine tune the mm. intensity of the laser. Uh, and if you, if you, if you get it wrong, you're going to burn a spot. You mean. Exactly. <laughs> but but we know how, how okay, to, to okay. operate and this thing. side, they're terrified of being, I signed yeah. off these people to come here in this little spot and they're going to lose their job. So, so yeah. th they yeah. said no. I get you, I get you, no. I get you. It's C-Y-A. Yeah, it yeah. has to yeah. be 100% yeah. <laughs> safe. Yeah. But it, mean, it means... The, Lack we, of we, access, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand. So it means the information. How about we can private get. collectors then? Instead of just the institution, like this gentleman you mentioned yesterday. Yeah, I mean. This private collector. Is he going to let you look at the stuff? I think I might be. I mean, I haven't asked him, but. Yet, uh, you, yeah, yeah. Nah, well. But uh, I think they're more. Maybe more <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> you don't like ask, like, you like he was touching his, his, yeah, uh, yeah, his yeah, books yeah, yeah, and yeah, showing yeah, yeah. me. Okay, okay, okay. And also his prints. Yesterday was the first date, so you have to be careful how far you can go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask him, but um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you could set, set up for me, okay, what would for you be the perfect situation to do the kind of work that you want to do? What would be the, if you died today, went to heaven, what would heaven, <laughs> no, no, what would your heaven be? The, the lab and the kind of stuff you want to do. Okay. What do you really want to do? Okay, well, first I'd like to have instant knowledge of Japanese language. Oh, the language, <laughs> okay. <laughs> because there's also, we have this problem that some work, some research is done, but it's only published in Japanese. There's no translation, it's not mm. available mm. online, mm. so it's very difficult mm. for us mm. researchers mm. in Europe, in, 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 the, in America, to, uh, to have access to it. So that would help me a lot, because I'd, I'd love to do also the art history research as well, look through old records, look through mm. old letters. To solve what kind of problems? I was trying to move towards this. What oh. is it that you want to do? What kind of problems would you like to find the answers for or have fun finding the answers for? What are some mm. of the things you... I mean, some, some stuff, but I, I don't know if there's an answer, but you know about Okusai's daughter, well, Oi. I know nothing, you know, that she existed and worked with him. Well, yeah, so she worked with him and, and some um, scholar thinks that she, she actually did made a, work, a yes. lot mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of the painting. So I, I find this fascinating. Okay, wait a minute. I mean, he had other, he had apprentices as well, and she would have been in the room in the studio with him with apprentices. And we know that apprentices, that's why they were there. They did lots of the work themselves. Yeah. They weren't yeah. just there to be, to be schooled. They were there to join in and help mm. them out the work. So for her to be in that group is a no-brainer. Of course, her hand is in a bunch of these things. Yes, but she, she's, I don't know. I mean, I don't know <coughs> that much, but she seemed to have quite 
um, an important role. You know, oh. she she di- she she wrote letters about the techniques, how to prepare pigments. Mm. Mm. Uh, we think she's she's had a uh, um, big influence on the um, on the manual, the art manual written mm. by um, mm. 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 Uh, Oksai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she was, she was there for what, forty years or something, a long, long time, right? And mm. with him, all yeah, all yeah, time. yeah. So apprentices would come, apprentices would go, but she was yeah, uh, yeah. So maybe she was so she running was the a, workshop. I, I, I don't know. know. Yeah. Yeah. Her hand at and is all over the place there. And I, I'd, I'd love to be able to find ways to detect her hand, if if it's possible. I, I'd, I'd love that. Well, as an outsider with no specific knowledge of the, the left and right of the brush strokes, I don't know if that would be possible, would it? To me? I don't know. In, in her paintings, and you know, I'm, I'm wondering if she had like special ways, mm-hmm. like if mm-hmm. she liked mm-hmm. special combination of pigments, mm-hmm. if she... Would this, again, not to be sarcastic about this, would it matter? I mean, Hoxai, we, we look on Hoxai as a single name and a single genius person. We know that around him were a number of people mm. working with him and, quote, helping, unquote. So what more are we going to learn than this? You know? I don't know. I mean, I'd like to, mm. to know mm. more about mm. uh, the influence of mm. uh, female mm. artists. Well, because that's on you, of course, because, uh, you know, back in those days, those apprentices would all have been boys, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's of interest, modern. That's, that's a personal well. interest. Yeah. That's in my yeah. heaven. <laughs> no, I did ask you. I asked you. So, 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 so. And then the great way, if you want the definitive answer, is on, on this. Yes. You know, yes. So. But what else would you research? What else would you be, be doing? Um, I, I think I, I'd like also to to research like the influence of um, Okusai on, on French artists. I that, know, that one's been done to death, hasn't it? I know. I'm sure. I'm sure it's really? not been done to death. Oh, really? I mean, there must be a dozen I mean, books on the market with different art historians looking at this. Yeah, but animals. scientists. I'm, I'm... Scientists? What? No, I'm, I'm stunning. Yeah. What, what scientific approach to this? We know, quote, no, Japanese art influenced those impressionists, those people, mm. the, the Van Gogh, Monet, and all these guys. What would a scientist have to say about this? I'm very... Mm. Um... I mean, we're not talking choices of pigment materials, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. So what, what is, what well, is the scientific I guess, aspect of this? I, I guess, you, well, again, you asked me for my version of mm, heaven. Mm, mm, and mm. I think for me, because I don't know so much about this, but I find this an aspect that's, that's um, fascinating. You know, the influence. But So maybe not from a science, um, scientific perspective. But for me to know more about it, and uh, be more appreciative, because I've done a lot of science in my mm. in mm. my career, mm. and sometimes be tired of science, and I'm, I I enjoy <laughs> the. Uh, mm. I get a good blend of both, of course. Yes. You know the, the technical aspects of things and yeah. the emotive aspects of things. In my yes. life, it's full of both. So yeah, mm. so, okay, I can get that. And as, as you were saying it, I was thinking, how could I answer that question myself? What is the scientific aspect to the influence of Japanese graphic arts on Western art? And I guess you could try and identify chains of influence, perhaps. Mm-hmm. This influenced artist A, and then artist B saw this, and his work changed. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's scientific. This is you know trying to follow a chain mm-hmm. of influence down the line. But if I go back to the science science, and go back to... Uh, Oksai. Mm-hmm. I think what I'd like to do, but th- this is actually, this is hopefully is going to be done for real, is to find ways to look at um, uh, the faded colors on prints, what they look like before they were exposed to, to light. And uh, this can be t- done, but destructively. If you have a big sample, we can do that on textiles. If we have a big sample of a, mm-hmm. when I say big, mm-hmm. it, it, it's no, still it small, yeah, yeah. but it's too big to take yeah. from a from a print. Yeah. So if we have a, some textiles that's faded and we have some fibers, we can detect what was the faded um, dye. So what what was the plant material that was used? Exactly. But surely aren't there people now? I mean, even in our field, a young Shimoi san is a young printer here. He yeah. is working making a, in, making reproductions of woodblock prints. And in his garden, he is trying to grow, mm-hmm. as far as we can research it, yeah, trying yeah, to grow yeah. the exact flowers. So yeah. that, that, that's sort of being done, can be done. If we no, know no, it's no, a no, soft no, flower, no, no. we can... No. So you have a print that's completely faded. Okay. And you want to know what it looked like before it was faded. At, at the moment, we can't tell. 
because we we have we can't detect oh is this fading so there's not enough molecules there to tell yeah. that was a safflower or that exactly. was an indigo or whatever okay well yeah. then yeah. game over for that one so what we are trying to do is to find ways of time of taking just one fiber or two fibers of faded mm -hmm. uh, i mean mm -hmm. dye mm -hmm. and analyze it Identifying and find yes, okay, okay, okay. yeah but yeah but at the moment, we can't do that with just uh, a few fibers. We would need much more. Okay, but again, sort of, we, we, we do know what specific plants and, and tree roots mm -hmm. and stuff were used to make pigments back in that era. There was yep. the, the people doing the fabric work and the people doing printmaking work and, and painting, Nihonga paintings or, mm -hmm. or whatever, all had their l list of, of things that they were using. And those... Those plants are known, the seeds yep. are still around, they're yep. still grown. And I'm sure there must be all kinds of people like researching old kimono fabrics who, who are doing this in their backyard yes, and yes, stuff. Yes, so yeah. isn't this sort of known? Can we not recover these colors? We can recover the color, but we, we don't know which, once it's faded, <coughs> how do we know? Oh, I mean, if it was a yellow, exact if it was... Where the gradation came and, and you mean, or how deep the yellow was on uh, the Yeah, color? yeah, yeah, or, or what color it used to be. Because sometimes you, you're just left with something that's blue, but actually there hmm. used to be hmm. a, a Any yellow... Any number of shades, or yes, yes, yeah. could have been yeah. like sort of anything. Yeah, yeah. So... I, guess so. Mm. I don't know, I mean, to me, once that print is faded, sort of, there it is, you know. If we... How can I explain this? We ourselves, even if I knew that that particular thing was made with a, a safflower pigment, mm -hmm. or whatever, I would not actually be interested in doing it that way now because the requirements for the objects that I'm making these days mm. are different. I, know, I want to make a beautiful object, but if yeah. I did use safflower, it would only be beautiful for you know yeah. 24 hours, and then but it's not going to be beautiful anymore, because it's going to be gone. So this is where, because, um, so we believe that for the 36 views of Mount Fuji mm -hmm. series, Okusan had a personal interest. And in the first, we call it first edition, that he chose very carefully the, the colors touch. himself. Mm. So I'm re we're really interested mm. to know what was his mm. vision. Yeah, yeah. So that's, it's that's sort of a mission impossible, but I get the idea. I get no, no, no. Again, I'm, I, I get it. I get it. It's a, it's mm. a wonderful goal. To me, it seems a bit idealistic, and I'm not really sure if it matters at all from, from my mm. point of view. You know, mm. Again. I will have different viewpoints for you. It doesn't mean I disrespect your viewpoint, but I absolutely would have a different viewpoint on some of this. Mm -hmm. And right there, you mentioned it because this was, you feel it was an important project at the time that Hokusai was involved in choosing mm. the colors and stuff. And in no way could I argue against that, but I would want to put on the table that that certainly wouldn't have been common for almost all of the mm. importance that he made at yep. all. You know? yep. That I can buy the idea that for a special project he was involved. Yes. But for, my God, 90x percent of the work that had done during mm. his life, he would have had nothing to do of with such decisions. You know, so, so. And this is Dave's, I know, uh, my own, it's a word prejudice. This is absolutely my prejudice. I've spent all my life in this, as, a, as an adult life in this field, Hokusai the genius, or Tomato the genius, Hiroshi the genius. And they did sketches, they did nice sketches. But from my point of view, the men who really played a huge part and made great many of these decisions are unnamed, unknown. Mm, craftsmen yeah, yeah, people forget. It was... Uh, yes, and it, and well, they don't care. It doesn't matter, you know. We just remember the name Hokusai for that book, but a lot of the creative decisions were made by other people, but mm. that's not known, and it's just my little prejudice that I want mm. that to be known more. Mm. And be, yeah, because I, I want the craftsman's status to be ris risen and known more, that ends up being like I'm trying to push Hokusai out of this, you know. Mm. And that's not true, of course. There, there's this, it's, we come back to this again and again, it's that quartet, and we need all four of those people to be working max, full power, full skill, mm. to make those beautiful objects that we see. And just maybe my pendulum has just swung <laughs> too far back, you know. I want these craftsmen to be to be mm. recognized. So, so as a result, I would say something like, "Oh, we didn't just just go away. We don't need him. We can take care of this. You know, just give me the sketch and get out of the room, and we're good to go <laughs> on this." You know? And maybe I do that too strongly and too much. So, so whatever. Mm.
you're pushing back the other way. That's fine. <laughs> and that brings to uh, we're we're going. Here, they're shutting it. We can hear a couple scene, but Dave's getting too quiet. It's okay. The microphone is here. Just whatever. I train. They want to hear you. No, they don't. They're here. <laughs> they can hear me every day of the week. But before I forget this, that that particular point that I brought up right now does bring me to one of the specific things that I do want to show today. This lady in our discussions about the Hokusai book, back and forth about this, the, the, this lady and her fellow researchers there have been really helpful in guiding me in a couple of very specific things. How do I start this discussion? We have sketches. We need to make prints. The sketch will not make a print exactly as it is because the sketch was done by a brush. The prints were done by a knife. The sketch will have parts where it's dark going lighter because the brush ran out of ink. The finished print, in my understanding, does not need to go lighter because the finished print doesn't mm. run out of ink. So we have lines on the sketch that are faint and blurry that have to end up being carved sharp and clear. Okay, that's the carver's job. Because that's the carver's job, the finished print will have inevitably the taste of the carver mm. in there. We have hook size design and hook size taste, uh, but we also have the carver adapting and editing and modifying this into the form of a piece of wood. Yeah. So this is by means of an introduction to something that Capucine has sent me and shown me. <clears throat> My point that I'm trying to make is a finished woodblock print shows a huge amount of influence by the carver. It goes back to what we said a minute ago. I said all the claim, all the acclaim has gone to the designer. The craftsmen were not noted at all. And Dave's frustrated because the craftsmen really were the ones who shaped every line of this. A few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, you sent me some images mm. from a book you guys have in your collection. There's a, mm. a famous Hokusai book, a three-volume book called Furaku Hapke, 100 Views of Mount Fuji. I don't own it. That's past my pay grade. I could never hope to own a nice copy of this. You have the copy that Jack Hillier, I guess, found, right? Or, or collected. Uh, yes. We're... And the point I'm getting to with in my long roundabout way is this. In that book, there are some designs that are, I'll get back to my page here. There are some designs like this that cross the gutter of the book. It's one picture and it appears on the left-hand side of the book and the right-hand side of the book. Now, we've been through this on this stream any number of times. I've shown you how whenever we see this, because of the way Japanese books are, are the binding, the left-hand side is on a different piece of wood from the right-hand side. I, I should have perhaps prepared an example. The book opens like this. The left-hand sheet is on that wood block. The right-hand sheet is on this wood block. Now, that's of no concern to the designer who just draws a picture like this. The publisher, after everything's done, takes from the design and says, okay, thanks, guy. We will now get busy making this. The publisher's people would actually then cut that design in half, paste it and get it ready on another piece that had all the, the labeling and titling, and then combine it with the other sheet that was the other back side mm. of this. And this part of the image would go to the workshop, carve that, you guys. This part of the image would go to the workshop, say, carve that, you guys. It wouldn't have been sent to a different part of town. It would go to the same workshop. And the guys in the workshop, then the carvers, would then get busy carving this stack of images. It could be that the same person got the job for this one and got the job for that one. It Maybe that was maybe mostly the case. We don't know. In the case of a large project, going to a workshop where a number of people were carving, a master and assistants and apprentices, mm -hmm. it could be that this block got given to Mr. A and this block got given to Mr. B. We know absolutely this is how it works. But what Capucine has found is a number of places in that particular book where we can absolutely identify. If I look at this now here, there's a picture that was sent in left-hand side, right-hand side, and she has done a blow-up to show how the carving of exactly the same pattern in the picture looks dramatically different on one page of the book and another page of the book. Mm. And it's not a theory, we know it's simply Mr. A took his knife and dug it in and carved it this way, and Mr. B carved it that way. 
Actually, this one you started to show off to show with us. I wouldn't myself have actually picked that as a really good example of showing the differences, because that's a to me that's a bird at rest, sitting down. The feathers are quiet. This is a bird flying. Yeah. And I could I would I could be willing to have somebody strongly come back to me. Dave, the hawk's eye drew it differently because that that bird is flying and those feathers True. are rippling. True. So. This is an example, but I wouldn't take this as an absolute ironclad example. Well, I understand. So, so I'm not against you. You have shown me this thing that I didn't notice. When she sent me this PDF file, well, no, it was a PowerPoint, PowerPoint, PowerPoint file. Yeah, she yeah. sent me this a few, few months ago, or whatever. And I looked at this, and I was happy, angry, frustrated. Why didn't I see these things first? This lady <laughs> has, oh my God. Oh, whatever, it's done. I've, I've scanned some in. Oh, you've can't, okay. I've scanned some it so we can get it here. Yeah. Okay. Here is, let me go, oh, they're coming up in the wrong order. One sec, one sec. Okay, here we go. Here, can you see what, they're, they're looking at yeah. this now. They've, this yeah, is yeah. Uh, from her PowerPoint presentation. She has shown me a book page and she's outlined with a, a red-orange box the area of interest. Look at the dots on the hillside. Now, the original sketch, the, the designer would have just gone dot, 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 or assistance or whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's now look at the actual finished book, if I can find, oops, it's not that one, it's this one. Look at the left-hand side. The left-hand carver has cut little triangles. The right-hand carver has cut more whatever, random. So there's absolutely no question. This is two different people. And the book looks different, it has a different feel, it has a different taste, but it's exactly the same design. Mm. So how much of the taste is Hokusai, how much of the taste is the carver? Right, yeah, look at me, I'm a carver, <laughs> right? So, so, so this is right up my alley. I love this because it, it feeds my side of this argument that the craftsmen were so important that they had mm. such a huge part to play in this. You know, designers just, just, Give me the rough sketch. That's all we need. So, so, so. The other one is even better. If I could, I've got these in the wrong order here. There's, where is it? Here, this one. If you look at the orange box again, it's just some random trees and stuff in the background. We're not even looking at the important people. Again, you can see in this one. Look at the left hand. Those trees, the dark and the light. Let's find the close up. Where is it? It's here. Look at that. Look at this. Absolutely the same design sheet, completely different. Mm. And I was so frustrated that I hadn't seen this. Well, I don't own the book, so that's my that, that exactly. Whatever, so. <laughs> but yes, yes. But yes. I don't own the book either. Well, you've got it there. <laughs> Come on, you, you can look at this anytime you want, right? And I, I, is this this one from the Hillier collection, right? The one with the notations yeah, up in the top Yeah, but it's, it's from the, our website. We've got high resolution images from our website. I haven't seen the. So I should have seen this. I should have seen this. <laughs> no, so you don't actually look at the book very often. No, You're mostly no, looking no, digital. no. It's, it's more difficult to get Why? access to it. For you guys? Well, I, I need to book with with people. I don't have the keys to the store. Okay, so, so this stuff, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. I mean, uh, the security there must be insane. Yes, yeah, of course, yeah, of course, yeah. of course, yeah. people put. So, so I can, pockets. but it's yes. going to us. Yes. Paperwork. Some work for yeah. my for yeah. my colleagues. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But do you do that sometimes? Do you get into the collection and just sit and look at some of these objects for fun, for pleasure? No. Oh, you don't. <laughs> no, I wish I could. But I go into the galleries. Just like I can. Anybody can. Yeah. Oh yeah, my God. Yeah, I don't know. See, this is sort of a wet dream for me to be in the British Museum surrounded by all these things and you can just open these things. And they let me do that 25 years ago. The VA. Oh my God. It's wor worse, better. Me and Sadako were there. They looked, we wanted to see how to noble prints. I, mm -hmm. That was something I was trying to find a how to noble print to do in my Suriname. They put the two of us in a back room. They opened the cupboard. There was shelves. Yeah. And they pulled a shelf out and it had portfolios. They put a portfolio on the desk. A bell rang. The guy said, okay, you're okay with this. And he left. And like two hours we were there in the back room. It was open. These how to noble prints are sitting. Wow. I, I'm a, not sure it would world, happen. A different yeah, world, different yeah, world, yeah, yeah. Uh, now different world. We, we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I can't let no, I visitors. I, I would have it. to be physically. I get it. I get yeah. It. yeah, yeah. So I, I don't actually ask that or expect that now. Yeah. But just, yeah. just tell just tell a story. They did yeah. do this to me, and it was just like heaven. For me. Uh -huh. It was like heaven too. The BM too. I think I've told this story on the stream before. That when they 
when they did let us in that day, they were really, really busy. They had just received also a, a package from Japan. So I got at the end of that table, like I told you, they put me at the mm -hmm. end of the table with Sudamon Robbins and Sadako, my partner, wasn't really interested in that. And she was chatting with, there was a young girl there. I guess she was bicultural, uh, English Japanese girl. I don't remember the names. Right. Anyway, this package had arrived, and in there was a little wooden cabinet. Mm -hmm. And there were drawers and, and doors and stuff on it. And it was a trick cabinet. It was one of these, maybe, what do you call it? Hakone Zaiku. It, you had to sort of push here, pull here, mm -hmm. tab here and pull here, and then a little drawer, reach inside, push a button and open something else. <clears throat> and it had come with no knowledge or instructions or anything. And the staff was there <clears throat> trying to open to work it. Out, and yeah. the problem is, it just might be stiff because it's old. So just pull a bit. And you don't know, are you going to break it? Yeah, no. Now Sadako knew, actually, she has some of these more modern ones mm -hmm. in her home. So she mm -hmm. knew a few of the, like, techniques and she got involved and they got a couple of the doors open and everybody's excited they're making notes mm. <laughs> so she for a few hours she was an official research researcher at the british museum <laughs> wonderful. wonderful i'll never ever forget that day we had so much fun so oh. much fun they were so friendly and so when i you know first learned about you and met you my image of you is that you are living in that paradise environment <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> but now uh, uh, you, you let me, say, yeah. Mm -hmm. You give me thing, uh, thoughts for food, like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I'll ask to, to go to the, la to, to the store and, and spend, uh, because I, I can spend time on my own there. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah just have <laughs> so, fun. So. I've had, over the years, I've had a few visits like this. You, this is the second time you've been here, right? You were here four or five years ago, right? Before the yes. pandemic. We looked yeah, at some prints yeah, upstairs yes. and things yes, like that. Yes, so, I remember. So, with your friend. I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not a target yet as far as you know being a place for researchers to come and stuff but the collection upstairs here is building 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 the little mm -hmm. window on japanese prints that we have designed to, to collect and stuff and we have beautiful stuff here stuff that institutions like yours don't pay any attention to of course because we have copies <laughs> <laughs> i would use that word no but we have beautiful prints and uh and I've got it. I sleep in that room, and you know, there it is. Mm. The shelves are around me. I, I live in there. I breathe in there. And now and then, you know, I pull up a folder, and and I can still mm. enjoy this stuff. You know, maybe if Mokahankan grows a bit, and we have to get a lock on the door, and all of a sudden, Dave, you, uh, you know, I need permission to go in there and and look at these things. Maybe it will come to that at some point. But at the moment, it's right there. You know, I just mm. go in the room and sit down. I will. I was trying to think while you're here, what yep. do we have that might be of interest to you to see? I don't know, you know, because like access to what you have, this stuff might not be of specific interest. I don't know. What have we got that you would want to see while you're here? You know? I don't know, because you don't know what we got. Yeah, exactly. That's the real issue. <laughs> it's not catalogued and all ready to go and, and, and even accessible. We're still in that same position. Let me find yeah. the box and dig in the box. I mean, I mean for me, like you know, that. to look at print, different example of printing, printing techniques, that would be really interesting. I think when you were here a few years ago, we, we were involved in that British Museum discussion, the Great yeah. Wave discussion. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. had been trying to say that even the original publisher let alone later major copies, the original publisher, he had a hit on his hands, mm -hmm. so the blocks would have started to wear out. So I think that was part of my thesis, that even the original publisher, doing the original edition, would have started to replace blocks one by one, as they would mm. have worn out. And I think to, to show you that this is still really happening today, the oh, yeah, unit of yeah, that beaching yeah. print, the, the, yes. the lady with the tea tray. Yes, okay. And we have one set of prints that started to be published in the 1960s, and it was a bestseller. These were Utamara reproductions. And it went through the 60s, into the 70s, and into the 80s. The same company selling the same print with the same catalog and the same you know, mm. outfit. And yet I can identify seven yep. different. And the number of hairs are different. Stuff like yes, this. Seven yes, dramatic. Yes. So the same publisher will, will replace blocks as they yeah, go. So for me, the original Great Wave publisher must have done the same thing. No, I don't think so. Mm. Oh, oh, okay, only, we, only we don't need to replay the yeah. same argument. It's yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. But, <laughs> <coughs> but I remember that four years ago when you were here, five years ago, we yes. did do that. And I pulled yeah, out yeah, these things. Yeah, and, and I took a photograph of them and I compared them, them and said, oh, yes, indeed, I, I see differences. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are we now? We're at nine o'clock. We've come for an hour. I really haven't been 
this is supposed to be like an AMA. You guys are supposed to be asking questions, and I have completely, totally ignored the chat. <laughs> so, calling up saying, show her Okada's Genji prints. We will do that. They're upstairs in the collection after the, after the uh, stream's over. Can somebody recap at the moment? Can you tell me now some questions that have come up that it's a good chance for me to throw to this lady? Someone says, it's been a good discussion. It's been perfect. What have I missed? What should I be asking her, please? She's answered many of the things they wanted to ask. Oh, it's Ichika Sariyo. Come on. Okay. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Did you meet? Did you meet last week or not? I think we did. I was in the This is Ichika Sariyo. I'm on the printers upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think you had a discussion about a new print by, by uh, Jed. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, with, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, with the king trees. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
someone's asking, has she touched the Hoxai wood box? Is that, is that gone? Well, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. The, the, I wish. <laughs> I mean, nobody on the planet would ever, just, just, no, no, they don't exist, they don't exist. Well, not, not the Great Wave, but so oh, you exist. That was what I was about to ask. Do you have other block sets? I mean, the, the block set for the Sumida Gawari Organichi mean, is we, in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. We, we so. don't have mm -hmm. any wood blocks by Okusai. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. sometimes, like I think in, in Kyoto, they have a box that was made using... Uh, that came up last year in Yahoo Auctions. Yeah. I missed it. It came through my Yahoo Auction list. It was a hibachi. Uh, it's another box, but yeah, there are two boxes. Yeah, the yeah. same story, different story. Okay, whatever. No, 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 but there was one that came like like with yeah. the and eagles. It was the eagles, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. But there's also another one, but in a museum. Okay, this I don't know. So yeah, people yeah. started after that episode came in the front page of the newspaper. Everybody starts to look at all these old hibachi. So, so yeah. the the point we're trying to get here is the the blocks. Once the publishing was no longer needed because nobody wanted to buy that print, or once the blocks were so worn that it was sort of impossible to do it then the physical wood block was of no interest to them. The usual thing is the workshops were heated by maki stove, wooden stoves, so bingo, the blocks are fuel for the stove. Or if they were thick, plane them down and use another one. I have some older blocks that are really, really thin, and they are obviously the remnants of what was a thicker block. So this stuff was of no interest whatsoever until somewhere along in the Meiji era when somebody here realized the foreigners then visiting Japan were interested in these things and they became sold as blocks, or a common one was to make what we now call hibachi. It's a wood of uh, ceramic, not ceramic bowl or a wooden bowl filled with ash, surrounded by a wooden border, you know, a wooden, wooden mm -hmm. box. And this is the heating system for a Japanese house, you know, the ash mm. inside. And they're in the West, they're called hibachi. And they, they come up on auctions all the time. Mm. And last year, two years ago, one was found and some person who bought this recognized, wait a minute, that looks like a hokusai design carved on the outside, did a bit of research, and it was the yeah. wood block from a kakemono head, so, yeah, 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 yeah. so now everybody's going crazy looking at all these old hibachi, is it a real, <laughs> so. mm. but yes, no, we don't have much, I've got more blocks here than the British Museum has, and you know, we've got lots of blocks from the Meiji era, uh -huh. some of them are just, oh my god, gloriously, mm. gloriously carved, you know, gloriously carved. It's hard to believe human beings actually did this, you know. Wow. So beautiful, so beautiful. You have them here? Yeah, right here. here. They're mm -hmm. on the stage. We've made prints from them. Oh. We've, we've got stuff that we are making prints from. And this is, it's a known company. Tansei <laughs> Do. Oh, oh wow. The, oh my gosh. Yeah, I see what you mean. Just the lines incredible absolutely oh. incredible absolutely incredible oh and my we've been gosh very careful we make copies from we make we make impressions from it you'll get me trained you'll get me trained we make we, we take impressions yes we take impressions from this and we do it really carefully and of course we use only a super fine delicate brush and we only will do 50 60 copies of it. 50 60 sheets at a time yeah, yeah. in order not to, to wear out the block yeah, because yeah. It, as far as i'm concerned i'm i'm, I'm a caretaker of this I, don't, I own it, but I'm a caretaker, and it's my responsibility to make sure I don't destroy that thing. Mm. They're so beautifully done. But, uh, and do you think they, they had microscopes or, or something? Oh, I wish you hadn't asked that. I don't know. It's hard to believe that a man can sit there and carve. Now, we knew they had glasses. We yeah, knew yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we knew uh, they had glasses. As like a sensor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's all I can say. We, we wow. do have glasses. And there's the double glass technique. I know the carvers, Asuka-san does that, not when anybody's watching. Asuka-san does this. He's got one pair of glasses, and he will put another pair on top, and actually it works. And you can see, hey, look yeah. at this. Wow, you can see yeah. it. So there's certainly no microscopes involved. Mm. Like I, you know, like I use. And I don't know. One stunning advantage they had is the wood was magnificent. I mean, this wood, and we've got it here, it's upstairs. It is rock. It's hard to believe it's cherry wood. It's like it's got the density of like concrete. It's just incredibly heavy and hard. And it's a piece of wood. Mm. It's a piece of cherry wood. And we have no access to stuff like that. That's my excuse. Would it be harder to come? Well, it's physically hard. You know, the, the yeah. density is there. But we're not taking away, I mean, what can I say? Would it be harder to carve? No, you just, it, okay. it will leave finer lines. And a, it means you can carve smaller lines. You, you only mm. take off a, a tiny fractions of wood at a time. Mm. 
Now you've got great steel. You know, the Japanese, there's nobody in the planet that makes steel, you know, cutting steel like the Japanese do. Mm. We know the history there. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. But, but even what, I mean, this I was so impressed. Mm. And, and my colleagues were so impressed by the... Whatever, you know. The goal here, when we worked on this, remember, the goal here is not simply to carve the most microscopically fine lines we can do. The goal here is to carve sensible lines yes. that, that are matching the image. But having said that, <coughs> I wish I would have been more... I wish I could have done a better job, you know. There's probably nobody else around here. The three of us who are doing this project, there's nobody else on the planet that can do the kind of job we are going to do for this mm. series over, the year, over this next year. But having said that, these guys kick my ass. My excuse is that the car. They carved had better. better well, so wood. These, these are my excuses. Better wood, better <laughs> tools. But more, more than that, the carver who carved this was a carver. Get up in the morning, carve, went home, got had a drink, and went to bed. You know, so he. And he is the surviving carver of a strict workshop where the mm. kids that couldn't cut it just left. He's a survivor in that sense. And he spent all his life mm. doing this and doing only this. So that's sort of my, my uh, what's the word, defense mechanism here. Dave is very proud of the work he does. <laughs> I'm interviewing you. I do computer programming. I print, for God's sake. Those guys yes, don't do cotton yes. printing. So that's my, my mental defense mechanism, you know. And they're all true. They're all true. I'm very proud of the work we've done. I do recognize that compared to the best of the old days, I'm not as good as them. Compared to the normal work of the old days, I'm fine. I could make a living back then. Remember, because we're, we're cherry-picking here. We're cherry-picking mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. masterful example. There was a bell curve. There was a huge amount of mediocre work. Very little amount of masterful work. Actually, it wasn't really a bell curve. There were tons. It was more of a... It was more of a fall off, junk mm. galore, going down, 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 down. So when I say it was a bell curve, that's wrong. Bell curve without the left hand side, because most of the work was absolute, absolute junk. Mm. They are, they are yelling, and the same person oh. keeps coming back. Somebody says, "What can be known or inferred from faded colors?" What is the origin of color? I think so. I think we were sort of chatting about that. What can be known or inferred was, yeah. Two things, what substance was used to print it, yeah. and beyond that then, what did the print actually look like to the people who saw it in the mm. day? I guess so. I'm answering yeah, for I, I her, uh, Yes, yes, yes. I wish I could show this, examples, you know. because so. we have examples of mm. prints mm. at the British Museum. Mm. Like, we have one impression that's very faded, and another impression where the colour has yes. been pre uh, preserved. preserved. Yes, and yes. it's a big difference mm. sometimes. But like were they actually from the same batch? I don't know. I know. So, 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 so. so, yeah. I was just looking at your stamps. And but just to hang on that question for one minute, you know, again, what I'm going to say next, I'm not saying it in opposition to Capucine's viewpoint. I'm saying it as a human thing. Even if we had the ability to, okay, let's do this with the original colors and flowers and tree bark, and there it is, we're now going to pick up the piece of paper from the our new reproduction, which is a masterful reproduction of the original colors. Even if we could do this, let's just put this in. I'm going to be looking at this under a different lighting system. This is, 19, this is 2023. This is not 1842, where they were looking at it under a candle or something like this. We are looking at it, a person who's looking at this sees images all day long. I see colors, I see... My brain is a different brain than the guy who saw it back in 1842. Mm -hmm. So. What I'm trying to stumble towards here is that even if we had a replica of the same object that was microscopically, molecularly exactly the same, our brains are so different that we wouldn't even be able to understand it in the same way. I'm going to make this thesis. What do you mean? That the, like we the would consumer in Hoxha's yeah. day and the, me, the consumer in my day, are so different. Because we see that as a piece of art and people would see that, well, that okay, as... Well, that's one thing. We can start making lists. That's one thing, uh -huh. yes. But even that, if you imagine a typical Edel Townsman of 1830, yeah. whatever, he gets up in the morning and he doesn't see actually any pictures. There's no imagery in front of him at this point. He's getting mm -hmm. up. There's nothing hanging on the wall. There's no yeah, frame yeah. pictures on the walls. He goes out, walks down the street. There's no pictures on signboards. Mm -hmm. If he happens to go into a temple, there might be a painting somewhere there mm -hmm. in the temple. Or if he's a, a rich man, goes into the castle, some of the sliding panels may have a, a painting yeah. on some. But your typical normal person in Edo yeah. wouldn't see 
an image. There's no newspapers, no magazine, no movies, no photographs, no nothing. Yeah. He spends his daily life without seeing pictures. Mm -hmm. He sees only real life. Okay, now there are bookstores, there is Hoxai's book in there, Hoxai Gafu or something. Yeah, yeah. And he goes into this place and there's the copy of Hoxai Gafu, comes onto the table and he opens it and there, for the first time today or in many weeks, there's a picture, a representation mm -hmm. of reality on the page. Now you and I get this because ever since we've been born, yeah, it's around us. But this man now opens that page and there's a village and Mount Fuji in the background and this peasant walking along. And my thesis is that he sits there and, it's, and there's an impact on him that I cannot understand. And he mm. would feel that man walking and feel the shape of that mountain. Because mm. maybe he's never maybe seen Mount Fuji or seen this village or seen this person. This is for him an image, mm. a, a glimpse into something that for him doesn't exist actually. Yes, yes. So I'm stumbling about this, I'm sorry, but my thesis is that, well that's nice, but we're not seeing what yeah. that guy saw back in 1842. Yeah, yes. And I can't recover this. Mm. Then there's a the thing she just mentioned, back then it was just junk, it was printed matter. Look at it, pick it up, throw it aside. Which sort of is a little bit opposite to what I just mentioned, you know. Mm. Now we're looking at them as art, and we're trying to make them as beautifully as we can, but back then, my God, it was yeah, just, yeah. blow it out. You know? But I'll stand by that, that our brains are dramatically different brains from the people of 18, or even farther back it would be even more dramatically different. And can you imagine a person, a, a peasant life person in Japan, who would live with never actually seeing a, the thing that we would call picture. Can you imagine then going into a temple somewhere and they open the doors and there's this scroll of a Buddha or something. When yeah. you start bowing down, I mean, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see, yeah. Mm. Would mm. be much more impactful than... I think so. Yeah, yeah, no, I, mean, I can't I, I think you're grok right. it, but I think so. I agree. So all these things we're doing with these things are sort of pay Yeah, different experience. You know, yeah, Definitely. They, our brain is different than their brain. But else I'll stand by that, you know, so I don't understand it. Let me see him. <laughs> uh, do you do multi-spectrum imaging? Does Capucine have published research about color fading that we have access to, that we can go and read? Uh, yes, there's some... Uh, Tell us more. Well, if you Google Kornberg, which is my Kornberg son... with a K? Yeah, Okusai, you, you'll find some stuff. Oh, do you have, do you, you, okay, just to make sure people understand the name. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you do that, you I won't find anything. I Ko Ren B E R yeah. E R G. Oh, G show. Yeah, yeah. Make sure it's. Yep, perfect. And Oksai. Mm. So for for googling. So yeah, you just Google, and I have mm. some open access mm. articles, and I've done multispectral imaging on the when you use. So light, like infrared you, light or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and ultraviolet light okay. and some. Okay, okay. And an X-ray. No, I, I haven't done any X-ray. I mean, okay. that's one that sticks in my mind. What was it? Five, six, seven years ago, a bunch of wood blocks were turned up here in a, in the countryside. It was a, a yakshai from somebody, and it did seem like the pigment traces that were left yes. on the wood blocks were the pigment traces from the old days. Yes. Like, the newspaper it was wrapped up on said 1775. <laughs> I don't know. The point being, the, the bluffs hadn't been reprinted. Mm. So it was really important. They were getting pigments not from leftover prints, yes. but they were getting yes. pigment traces from leftover yeah, wood yes, blocks. Yes, some, some people have published articles on yes, that. Yes, this was yeah. what, 10 years ago or so. And I think that went yeah. cheap, cheaper were the people I think doing this, weren't they? So I don't I can't remember. remember. But that must be, that's, that's the mother load, right? Because mm. there's the actual physical substance itself, and it's been wrapped up not exposed mm. to light, so that yeah. to me would be much more valuable and useful than the prints themselves, because there it is, it's X mm. molecules, spoonfuls of this actual stuff. And I'm cognizant of this, and we do, I said these, these blocks came to us from Meiji time, and I am cognizant of this, when I do get some of these old blocks, Dave, before you muck around with these things, have a look at this, 
try and figure out are you before you start reprinting this upstairs are you potentially damaging some information mm -hmm. and so have you even seen first. well yeah this is this is meiji it's a standard hiroshige reproduction yep, yep. and the ones we've got here as soon again as soon as the stream's finished we'll we'll, uh, we'll have a look at this i don't think that they are all that old and oh. you know, there's nothing that that goes back to the era that you know we're yeah. interested in here so but I am aware of this, and mm. it's quite possible if we did happen to get a woodblock that I thought had valuable information, we close down, we seal it, and we will we call you right away. <laughs> it's not going to happen tomorrow. I mean, I get stuff off Yahoo Auctions, and they've been around and around and around, you know. Mm. And sometimes what people who are selling a woodblock on Yahoo Auction will do, of course, so that people can't see the image because it's a blah, 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 block. So they will grab something, rub it on the block, and print and try and print to show what it is. Oh, the person who has got this book in order to try and sell it, and then I'm like, I oh wish no. you hadn't done that. Yeah. I guess you can still excavate. You know, you know, I start going down the layers of Pompeii to the, to the pigments <laughs> that are underneath it. So, but yeah, that would be much more useful, I think. Mm. Blocks rather than than prints. If there are any blocks, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's a problem. Are you doing research on designers other than Hoxai? Not at the moment, mm -hmm. but uh, I might be doing some on Hiroshige. It depends on our exhibition program, but mm -hmm. at the moment, Hoxai mm -hmm. only. Which pigments have you found are the most durable? I mean, I don't know if that's a relevant question here. I know. It, the light fastness these days when you go to a pigment shop and people like us when we were buying pigments we could buy from comma pigments or some or whatever or kramer pigments whatever these people are very careful they have sort of taken their pigments done samples exposed them to heavy light and whatever so mm. pigments now come with like light fast ratings how long you expect them to last and stuff in the old days this was of absolutely no interest to anybody at all because the, the mm. things they were making were consumable disposable objects but now that they are art objects, light fastness does become a factor. Mm. Does Moko Hong Kong care about this? Actually, I gotta say no. We ourselves, because we are not making high art, fancy art, I don't care about that. I know that I'm using pigments these days that are available in a commercial pigment market where they're trying to make things that are reasonably light fast. We know that the prints we make, this is going to last the lifetime of any normal consumer. I'm not worried that it may or may not be here 200 years from now. I really absolutely don't care. I'm careful enough that I know we're using pigments that will not fade within the mm. lifespan of the person who's consuming our product. And beyond mm. that, for me to try and worry about that beyond that, I mean, just, just, you know, I don't go there. But there are artists out there who very much care about this who try and follow the science and who try and use only the most mm. light fast pigments and they do their certificates of authenticity and then they try and sell it for a And we have artists who don't care either. Who don't care. Uh, and then, write and brown then, paper and bags, yes, and then it's a conservator's nightmare to show for exactly. those people. Exactly. So sometimes yeah, we they, even try to collaborate yeah, or, or with artists. it's plastic or something because it's, it's use, crumbling. Use something else, please. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. yep, yep. We, we do have one big advantage there in that the paper we are using these days, I, I, saw, I was a bit flippant there and I said I don't care about the longevity of the product we're making. That's not true because the, we have one huge advantage in that the washi paper we are using to make our prints these days, although it does have some differences between what was done in the old days, the, the production process has changed in the, the type of alkali that's used to, to cook the ash and stuff. Not even, it's basically at heart the same thing. It's mulberry fiber and mulberry fiber and hibiscus uh, juice, you know, the, the tordo eye. That's all that's left. The lignins are gone. Most of the celluloses are gone. Mm. It's nothing left but raw threads of mulberry fiber. And we know from experience this is going to last a couple of hundred years, the paper itself. So in all the people in the world who are making physical products for sale, iPhones or, or barons or, or plastic package for holding things in all the multitude of products that human beings make around the world the stuff we make is among the most long-lived product mm -hmm. of all time you know. this comes up in the shop sometimes you know people will ask us about this and I'll pull an old print that's 200 years old from the shelf and look at that and wow it's still there and I'm saying yeah the one you're buying today 
we'll also still be here 200 years from now. And you're like, promise? And I'm like, money back guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there, it's there, it's there. <laughs> this, this conversation comes up all the time in the shop. There was one hilarious experience. I don't, I've told the story so many times that it sort of blends and morphs and changes now. We had this conversation in the shop with somebody, and the guy who was browsing turns around and interrupts said, my products last longer than yours. And this was just some dude browsing in the shop. And he, all the rest of us now, we're, we turn to him and like, and he says, what do you think it is? So now we're guessing. I said 200 years. And some guy in the shop says, my products will last longer than that. And he made his guess. And we're like, no, 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 no. And he's, he, he says, I'm a ceramicist. Oh, <laughs> I so, yeah. so, and he's right. You know, we dig up archaeological stuff like from twenty thousand years ago, and like I'm not Indeed. claiming twenty thousand years for mine. But he said, like, "Good morning, good morning." But I did get back to him. I said, "Yeah, okay, twenty thousand years. They're going to dig up pieces of your bowl. <laughs> it's going to get broken. It's not going to survive like this." You know, so. That was a fun day. The conversation jumped all over the place that day. Somebody else jumped in and said, Dave, Dave, you're forgetting, you're forgetting. You're thinking too much physical. Think like... Digital. Uh, no, no, he, said, he no. said Beethoven. Beethoven's ninth will never die. I forget the example. Or Mozart string yeah. quartet or something. And yeah, Beethoven's ninth, it's going to not just be 200 years. It's going to go three, four, you know, as long as humanity will live. And somebody else said, okay, there we go, Hayao Miyazaki, the, the anime movies they're making. Dave, there's all kinds of people, Michelangelo, Picasso's paintings. And I'm like, I'm sitting here listening to this. Michelangelo, Picasso, you know, you bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> Together with me and what, what we're doing here. You know, so. But yeah, yeah, the, our mm. products do last a long time. And whatever, 200 years from now, your successors in that institution they look at your prints. They've got my prints yes. there, and hopefully, if I haven't screwed it up, hopefully... We'll have 11 more. Well, the one that, no, that's, <laughs> we know that's happening, but I mean, what, what will they be looking at? What will they ah. be thinking of? The washi comparison, you know? Whatever. I don't know. Bring it on, bring it on. If, if I can... If, that's an interesting point. If you can project X years ahead, what would the future researcher want to know about this? We've given you the print, it's sitting there on the shelf, but there's not so much background information. What information well, can filming. I supply now? Okay, but I mean, I'm, I'm putting this as a serious mm -hmm. question. What information or knowledge can I supply together with these prints that would be of use to the 200 year in the future Capucine? And that's mm. a serious question, because now is your chance. I don't mean right now, today, but while we're doing this and making this thing in collaboration, is there information mm. we can provide that would be of use to future researchers? That's a really fun one, you know, I mm. think. That's a really fun one. I've never thought yeah, of that before. Yeah. Well, like we're doing a video and I talk about this and Dave doesn't keep secrets. We show like how the sizing is done. I mean, last yes. week, this whole stream watched me size the next batch of paper for a bunch of these. So we're not like keeping secrets. Yes. But video is one thing. Is that really enough information? I don't know. And that's, think about this, please. Yeah, Over, I as will, time goes by, I we're going to be two, two years, we're going to be doing this together. Mm. And we will be, happily, we will comply to whatever level we, we are able to do. You know, I'm a little bit nervous when I put this off on the table because we've got that book, the Tokono book, from the guys in the Smithsonian mm -hmm, Institution. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, in their analysis of what was happening, they did something, they asked some questions back and forth. And at some point in one of those books, the guy makes the statement that when the paper was being printed by the printer, it was at a 57.75% level of moisture in the paper. Oh, and I'm that's like, very accurate. But I'm like, you want to run that by me again? Because it made absolutely no sense. There was, at some point, a, a measurement. A printer was doing this, and it was a dry day, a wet day, a small... You know, there was a number, you know, mm -hmm. of the relative humidity or whatever it's that paper. How did the guy in the Smithsonian know about this? To two... And he put decimal, two decimal... I mean, it just didn't make any sense no, it whatsoever. So Especially it, you, told, you tell me that the paper was what? So. Mm -hmm. Well, it was moist, yeah. so, but how so, moist, so whatever. So this is this yeah, the touch yeah. and feel. So when I put that off on the table, I have to mention, it. if you <laughs> if you want to know this, give me to a de three decimal places, what's the level of moisture in the paper when you printed that color? I'm going to say, 
Mm. Sorry, me. Or, or, okay, come on over next week and bring your tools. You measure it, because I sure have no way to measure it. Mm. Okay. Maybe I have somebody suggesting you need the labels of all the commercial products I use. Commercial products that I use. Well, actually, I don't actually have any commercial products that I use in making these things, you know. I don't know. Sumi Ink? Yeah, I do, I do have that. Yeah, could do that. Okay, yeah, all right. Throw your ideas in and, and we'll... Uh, Actually, know. I mean, is it only Sumi Ink? Or do you add... Because sometimes I, I was wondering, like the... Um, that is a super question, super interesting question. And I, I can't easily show... I can show you in a minute. Right. There's a, a wall display in front of us here with 40 prints or so, all made by Moko Hanka. And there's a, quite a wide palette, right? There's reds, green, blues, greys all over the place over there. Yeah. And we have this conversation lots of times with visitors. Upstairs we have seven jars or packages with seven different kinds of color things, pigments that we use. We have a, a warm red and a cool red. We have a sort of warmish blue and a coolish blue. We have only one yellow because there's not so many different products available we can use. We have a vermilion mm -hmm. and we have our bottle of, of sumi. And out of those seven things, and I'm discounting metallic pigments every moment, out of those yeah, seven yeah. things, all of those prints are made. We have no, there's no, when you open our cabinet, there's no green in there, there's no purple in there, nothing like this. Wow. Nor was there in the old days. Yes, yes. The yes, printer's yes. skill was to look at the sample he has or the description. Utamaro said, Murasaki. Okay, Utamaro, I got it, I'll make Murasaki. So the point is, and over the years, a workshop, if it's guided by a master with a vision, a, a master, but by a leader, <laughs> A leader with a vision, then yes. the, the prints coming from that workshop will show an aesthetic blend. They will show this. They will show a single aesthetic, uh -huh. as that wall does. And one of our core rules, mm -hmm. which we ninety nine percent adhere to, is you will never see over there on the wall any one of those seven in its raw form. Oh. Never, never. You will always have, uh, there's a, I said we have a yellow, you will never see that yellow there. You will see it mixed with something else. It will be How tinted. interesting. And that's what gives it the palette here. And we do the same thing with the gray. When we're finished here, you can, you can the grays, the, the top gray up there, the, the yeah. Mount Fuji with the thing before it. Oh, yes, yes, It's yes. not just dilute sumi. At some point in doing that sky, I took a trace of maybe blue or a trace of red or a trace of green or purple or yellow, put it in there just to tint it. And that gives it a life and a warmth. Mm. If it's just gray, it's plain boring. I didn't do that for this series. Specifically, I didn't do it for this series. This series is sumi, raw sumi, and nothing but sumi. Because I'm thinking that that's what the original would have been done. So yes, this has got my hand all over it, but this is not fully a Mokohankan production. This is a Mokohankan plus Hokusai production. Yep. So I haven't yep. followed my own company taste rules to the letter with this mm. one. That's, you know, it's sumi with more water, uh, more or less water as it goes. And now that I'm telling the story, now that I'm thinking about it, that cloud to me, it's boring. <laughs> it's boring. Well, you can make a second edition. Well, no, I, we, this was the way I discussed it with our staff. We are going to do it this way for this series. We are going to use Sumi and nothing but Sumi. Because remember, yeah. these 12 prints are going to stand. Yeah. We've already yeah. going to have the huge differences from two different carvers. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have two years of experience difference. Summer cherry, summer boxwood. I didn't want to have a, a mishmash of all different kinds of stuff. We do want a unified series. And the whole thing will be done, and I've told all the printers, Sumi and nothing but the Sumi. Mm. But that's not how we normally do it. That's really interesting. So yeah, there are a million stories here, actually, how much of this. We are, I know I'm at the beginning of my own video series on this. Next Tuesday, I'm planning on, on doing my own next video in this series. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about how, what we're doing from our production point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this will be uh, one of the things discussed when I do the video that talks about the, the printing process. Oh. It's 
We've come okay. 90 minutes. Look at this. My God, I hope it's I haven't talked too much and, let, and you know, kept interrupting you. I don't know. I hope there's been a good balance. I do talk too much sometimes. <laughs> and when as a guest, I sometimes forget I'm supposed to set you off and stand back and listen. So, I don't know. Uh, I, don't I enjoyed it, I so, know. you know. I get whatever, if there's something we missed, we missed it. I think there's been lots of good content here. Good. <laughs> thank you for putting yourself on the spot, literally putting yourself on the spot like this. Thank you very, well, very thank much. thank you so, for, for having me. You didn't know what's going to be thrown at you here, so I don't know. <laughs> so to recap then, your own video, the one that we made last week, is still a couple of months down the road. Yes. It, it's part of the Curator's Corner, Michelle. To, to we'll see. Okay. Sh Shan but that's the plan. But it might not be. Okay, what I don't know. The British Museum does have a YouTube channel. Uh, you can yeah. find it very easily, you know how. And Kapasin and I did some work for that channel, and it will be appearing there next month or two months from now. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll and I'll let you know, and you'll see a version of it okay. before. So we'll so. about that. The thing we've been talking about off and on today is the current our current subscription series, which we're doing in collaboration and cooperation with the British Museum. You know, and this lady was very instrumental in getting this organized and getting this approved. I know I asked you many things and you said I have to go upstairs and whatever, but whatever. But she, yeah, she yeah. made it happen. <laughs> and thank you for that. Thank you very, very much. Because well, this is well, going to be it's a, a privilege. whole lot of fun. A whole yeah, lot of fun yeah, doing yeah. this together. It means a lot to me. Well, happy to you say that. <laughs> it's just going to be so much fun doing this. Just so much fun. And let's make sure then, as I intimated a few minutes ago, let's make sure then that we do document this with stuff that maybe I wouldn't have thought about documenting mm. to make sure from your end that you have the information you guys could really use. Or could mm. really use. Yeah, just listening to you talking about the colors mm. 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 that you've treated okay. it differently. Okay. That's well, also really interesting get on to me. me. For this as we yeah. go forward. Yeah. Okay, I guess we'd better sign off. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> as, uh, yeah, whatever. It'll be on demand. It's This is on the Twitch website for a few weeks. Uh, along with the chat so we will be able to watch this and read this and see what questions we missed and what people have been responding that okay. will be on the twitch website for i forget it. i think it's five weeks i'm not quite sure okay thank you again very very much <laughs> look forward to having doing this again next time <laughs> i'll sign off thanks so much guys bye for now i didn't do any work at all just as well no, I just <laughs> so i shouldn't have even whatever i should have set the cameras up differently or something but it, the plan was to work quietly while you talked <laughs> so much for a plan okay Okay, guys. Bye for now. Thank you very much.